I'm going to say something um, wild and controversial that nobody has ever said before. Um, you've never heard this before, and you know this is going to blow your mind, but um, I don't like predators. I don't like people who prey on children. I don't like people who uh, groom minors, and I don't like people who engage in sexual conduct with them. Um, you know, just uh, just just putting that out there, because like nobody else has made a statement as brave as this, right? Um, I'm saying this for the first time. You've never heard it before. You know, there aren't accounts that like go after people like this at all. Um, but you know, some of these accounts, they just they just don't seem to to go against all of them. Um, so I figure I'll pick up the slack and uh, discuss some uh, known groomers uh, that, that are, you know, either being charged with this and the story is developing, you know, so there will be like an alleged or something um, massively alleged in front of these sorts of things, or they've already pled guilty or been otherwise convicted of uh, being a groomer or a predator. Um, and I have 10 cases, and then one uh, relatively big one after that, um, that I think relatively well encapsulate the situation. Um, I will include faces of these people, um, and I will include their names, and I'll include all these details, because I think it's important, you know? You gotta, you gotta put out the notice on these people. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of these people have gotten a huge amount of social engagement off this, so I can count on you... Uh, you uh, intrepid viewer out there uh, to, you know, retweet this, to share this to people, uh, to, you know, support this content, um, you know, because you care. You care. You want to stop grooming. We're on the same page, you and I. We're on the same page. Um, and because of that, uh, when I talk about these next 10 groomers, uh, you're going to definitely have, like, my six on this, because you oppose grooming, and that's why you've been talking about it. Um, and, and not for any other reason, not for personal reasons, not for gain, not for your agenda. You know, just gonna establish that. You are great. You're awesome. You did it. Um, so, uh, after you share this video, uh, be sure to watch to the end. Uh, for, you know, <laughs> uh, a little bit of, 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 a, of an institutional uh, corruption scandal and also a bunch of corruption prior to that. Because in an article on KMBC News um, 9 ABC, uh, it says, Grain Valley, Missouri police officer charged with sex acts with a teen. Documents show August Guildhouse admitted to concealing his identity and met victim through an online chat room. Uh, Grain Valley, Missouri. A Grain Valley, Missouri police officer has been charged with multiple child sex acts after a juvenile admitted to their parents that they had been sneaking out of the house to meet him. Uh, note, we are not identifying the gender or other characteristics of the victim to protect the individual's identity. Uh, the Jackson County Prosecutor's Office said 27-year-old August P. Guildhouse has been charged with first-degree sodomy, sexual exploitation of a minor, four counts of second-degree statutory sodomy, and three counts of second-degree statutory rape. According to the Prosecutor's Office, the Grain Valley, Missouri Police Chief reached out to the Missouri State Highway Patrol to investigate allegations that an officer had engaged in sex acts in 2022 and 23 with a juvenile. The request came after a juvenile was reported missing, then returned home and told their parents they had been engaged in sexual activity with adult men. The victim said one of the men was a police officer. The victim said they met the officer who lived in Grain Valley on online chat platforms Omegle and Discord. While interviewing the victim, police told the teen that no officer working with GVPD matched the name the victim was given. The victim's family reviewed photos from the department's Facebook page and identified the officer as August Guildhouse. The victim was able to tell investigators where Guildhouse lived, uh, describe identifying tattoos, including one of a skyline on his arm, knew his birthday, and knew the name of one of his children. 
message records between Guildhouse and the victim were recovered from Discord, in which the victim said they were under the age of 17. Probable cause documents in the case show Guildhouse admitted to detectives that he was a Grain Valley police officer, and that he had obtained a new tattoo on his arm covering up what had been the skyline of a city in Russia. Guildhouse reportedly admitted to knowing the victim was under the age of 17, and that he engaged in sexually explicit conversations and behavior with the victim on multiple occasions. Guildhouse told authorities he created an alias on the apps to conceal his identity. According to a statement from the city of Grain Valley, uh, Guildhouse has been placed on paid administrative leave as part of the rules and processes in the police officer's Bill of Rights. Quote, We are committed to the oaths uh, of office for law enforcement officers as well as the standards the citizens of Grain Valley expect from our department, the city said in a statement. We recognize the alleged crime is sensitive in nature and acknowledge the pain this can bring to individual families as well as community as a whole. Authorities said the investigation into Guildhouse's conduct continues. So, uh, they made an, an official statement. Uh, the article finishes out with a uh, hotline if you've been sexually assaulted. Um, and there's uh, plenty of evidence that uh, completely links this together. Um... Certain accounts don't seem to care. You know, they don't seem to have even mentioned his name, much less gone against him. But, you know, I'm sure that's just, you know, an outlier, right? So that moves us to an article from Fox News. Former Hopkinton Deputy Police Chief John Porter accused of child rape during stint as school resource officer. Middlesex Grand Jury indicts Porter on multiple rape of a child charges. A former Massachusetts deputy police chief has been indicted Monday on child rape charges stemming from repeated alleged assaults against a 15-year-old victim while he was assigned as a school resource officer, prosecutors say. John Porter, the 54-year-old former Hopkinton deputy chief of police, is now facing three counts of rape of a child after being indicted by a grand jury, according to Middlesex County District Attorney Marion Ryan. Quote, the incidents allegedly occurred during 04 and 05 while the victim was a 15-year-old student. The DA's office said Monday, describing how Porter had worked in the town of Hopkinton school system. Uh, during the time, the defendant allegedly assaulted the victim on multiple occasions off school property. End quote. The Hopkinton Police Department, which is located between Worcester and Boston, declined to comment to Fox News Digital when asked about the matter. As of Friday, Porter was let go of his position in the department, the attorney's office said. No arraignment date has been set yet. Porter previously was placed on administrative leave last August, with no reason given at the time, according to the Metro West Daily News. Oh, yeah, I'm sure there was no reason. Quote, as there is an active ongoing investigation, no additional information can be released at this time. End quote. The newspaper had quoted the police as saying, the month before... The Hopkinton Police Department honored Porter for 30 years of service, adding his name to a plaque in recognition of the milestone, police said in a blog posting on the department's website. We were thrilled to recognize Deputy Chief Porter's years of service and all he has achieved during his 30 years with the department, said Chief Joseph Bannett. He has shown a true commitment to bettering this department and serving the Hopkinton community, and we are fortunate to have him as a member of the Hopkinton Police Command staff. The department said Porter joined its ranks in 92, serving as a patrol officer, detective, sergeant, and lieutenant before being appointed deputy chief in 21. So, he is also the department's first school resource officer and built the foundation for the program as it is today, according to the Post. Quote, he is also the only member of the department to receive the Medal of Valor, which recognized his work taking into custody an apparently suicidal person armed with a knife who had doused a home with gasoline and attempted to light it on fire, police also said, adding that Porter has been selected as the Mothers Against Drunk Driving Officer of the Year four times. So, Greg Norman at Fox News clearly likes this guy, despite these charges, uh, because he really wanted to emphasize all that he's done for the community. Um, but, uh, we'll see if these charges pan out, because if they did, uh, 
the the the, the department kind of has something to answer for, doesn't it? It kind of has something to answer for that his name is on a plaque commemorating his 30 years of service and everything he's done. But for some reason, I, I feel like something is missing. Oh, right. A tweet from this account. Even with this guy's name. Shucks. I'm sure it's a coincidence. Um, yeah, uh, let's, let's see the next element in the pattern here. This is on KSN.com. Wichita police officer charged with sexual abuse of a minor. Molestation. Uh, note, the following story has been updated throughout based on documents filed with the District Court of Garfield County, Oklahoma. An officer with the Wichita Police Department has been formally charged in Garfield County, Oklahoma with one count of sexual abuse of a child under 12 and one count of lewd molestation. The officer is identified as Brock England. KSN News learned of the arrest on Monday but withheld releasing the officer's name until KSN confirmed the charges. On Monday, Wichita police said that command staff learned that England, who was off duty at the time, was arrested by the Sedgwick County Sheriff's Office and booked into the Sedgwick County Jail, stemming from the investigation in Oklahoma. The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation is investigating the case. According to police, England has been employed by WPD for seven years and was assigned to the Field Services Division. England is placed on administrative leave pending the outcome of both of the criminal internal investigation. KSN News has obtained the probable cause affidavit and learned from the Wichita Police Department on Tuesday that England was put on administrative leave in October of 2022. The affidavit says the OSBI received a, quote, request for investigative assistance, end quote, from the Garfield County Sheriff's Office in Oklahoma on October 7th, 2022. The allegations were that England had molested several girls in a rural area in Oklahoma. The affidavit says that the Sedgwick County Sheriff's Office was also investigating allegations in Wichita. On October 3rd, the Sedgwick County Sheriff's Office was notified of possible sexual assault allegations involving a 13-year-old victim. This prompted interviews with several victims at the Sedgwick County Child Advocacy Center. The victims said England had sexually abused them. One of the sexual assaults, according to the affidavit, happened while England was in the Wichita Police Department Academy. England, who was with the Wichita Police Department from 14 to 19, left WPD to work for the Enid Police Department, Oklahoma. He was interviewed by the OSBI via Zoom with his attorney. The affidavit said that he was only in Enid for four months before he went back to WPD in December 2019. England denied the sexual abuse, the filing says. Um, and just, you know, as an amusing aside, uh, I thought it was fucking hilarious that the first thing I see at the end of this article is in, um, a separate article for the best cheap wood chippers. Anyway, the account here clearly hasn't posted. Man, I'm starting to think this is a pattern here. You know, but we'll have to we'll have to see. We'll have to just go on to the next case, right? Former Rochester police officer who is facing charges of tampering with a witness. Joshua Paul Lobber, 43, is charged with two felony counts of first degree tampering with a witness. A former Rochester police officer is facing new charges after he reportedly contacted the alleged victim in a criminal sexual conduct case and urged the person to talk to someone about changing their story. Joshua Paul Laber, Labor, I don't care, 43, is charged with two felony counts of first-degree tampering with a witness. He was arrested on a warrant Monday and made his first appearance in Olmstead County District Court that same day, according to court records. A warrant was issued for Laber's arrest on April 30th, quote, given the risk to the victim, public safety, and the risk that evidence will be destroyed if defendant were to appear by summons. The complaint reads, Defendant has already instructed victim to delete conversations, end quote. Judge Christina Stevens set unconditional bail at 20000 for Laber on Monday morning. Stevens did not set conditional bail for Laber. His next court appearance is scheduled for July 6. Rochester police were contacted on April 13, 2021 for a report of a harassment call. 
A witness reported that LaBear had contact with the alleged victim in a March 2020 case via Pinterest, in which he blamed the person for ruining his life and said that he could not go on living anymore and that the person should talk to someone about changing the story, according to the criminal complaint. LaBear is a former member of the Rochester Police Department, but he was not an RPD employee at the time of this alleged incident or the alleged incident in 2020. He had been with the department for almost nine years and resigned in September 2012. In March 2020, Rochester Police Captain Casey Molanen wrote in an email that the conduct alleged in the charges filed against Mr. Laber are absolutely contrary to the department's mission and core values. Laber was charged in March 2020 with second-degree criminal sexual assault and possession of pornographic work involving minors. Both are felonies. He pleaded not guilty to the charges on October 13, 2020. A motion hearing in that case is scheduled for May 7th. In that case, Rochester police were alerted by Olmstead County Social Services after a juvenile reported that they believed there was a camera in the bathroom where they showered at LaBear's residence. The juvenile's age and gender are not listed in court records, but the charge notes that the person was under 16 year old. A search warrant was executed at LaBear's residence in January 2020, and investigators reportedly found a laptop containing multiple pornographic images, believed to be child pornography, including girls aged 10 to 12, according to the criminal complaint. Investigators also allegedly found images that appeared to be of the juvenile, fully clothed, taken from behind while they were at LaBear's residence. their tweet from that account nope darn damn fuck guess not but you know I mean, we're we're only we're only four in let's 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 get let's get five in you know to nondoc.com saying edmund pd employee arrested for soliciting sexual conduct with teenager Timothy Owen, a former Edmond Police Department officer and current EPD civilian employee, was arrested Monday at the Edmond Public Safety Center after the department completed an investigation into alleged inappropriate conduct with a 14-year-old girl. Owen, 68, served as an EBD officer from 86 to 15. Upon retirement in 15, Owen transitioned into an administrative role with the department as a civilian employee, according to Emily Ward, EBD Public Information Officer. After his arrest Monday, Owen was first booked into the Edmond Municipal Jail before being transported to the Oklahoma County Detention Center. Ward said the police department received a letter a few weeks ago that included allegations about Owen's conduct with a teenager in the summer of 2022. The letter was forwarded to detectives for review on March 29th, Ward said, according to a probable cause affidavit filed in Oklahoma County District Court. The letter stated that Owen was texting her at school during night and sometimes 60 or 70 texts a day. Texts from Owen included... Are you a virgin and I want to be your first, according to the probable cause affidavit? After receiving the letter, the Edmond Police Department identified the minor child and interviewed her on April 7th. During the interview, she confirmed that Owen is part of her extended family, although it is not clear whether the relation is by marriage or by blood. She said she would spend time with Owen at his work and around other family members. The child also told officers that Owen would video chat her using Google Duo. She said Owen would tell her how, how hot and sexy she looked. After Owen made these comments, the girl told Owen that she would tell his wife, which he discouraged. Oh no, don't tell my wife I'm trying to fuck a kid. Of course he would say that. <laughs> According to the probable cause affidavit, the child also spoke about a time Owen wanted her to sneak out of the house so he could pick her up. She told detectives that during their relationship, Owen told her to delete the text messages between them. Owen is facing one count of facilitating, encouraging, offering, or soliciting sexual conduct or engaging in sexual communication with a minor or person believed to be a minor. The crime is punishable by up to 10 years of jail time, a $10,000 fine, or both. Friday morning, an Oklahoma County Detention Center receptionist said Owen was released Tuesday after posting a $50,000 bond. He was released! But, you know, 
he he doesn't need to to be released, you know, to to have uh, accountability, right? But hey, you know, that accountability, uh that would be great if there was an account that was supposed to go against groomers, right? It would be a real shame if that account that was supposed to be against groomers didn't have anything on this one, wouldn't it? That would suck. That's like five of them so far that haven't been talked about by this account. Man, shucks. Gah, it must be a mistake. There must be some misunderstanding. So we'll just move on to case number six here, where it's on ABC 8 News, and its former Richmond police officer is convicted of 50 counts of possession of child pornography. 50 counts! Louisa County, Virginia. The Louisa County Commonwealth's Attorney Office has confirmed that a former Richmond police officer charged with 50 counts of possessing child pornography has been convicted. David Edward Stone, 51, is set to be sentenced on July 17, 2023, where he could face a maximum sentence of 255 years in prison. The investigation began in late 2022, when the Louisa County Sheriff's Office received a cyber tip after Stone's illegal online activity was identified by a technology company and the information was forwarded to the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children. On January 24th, detectives with the Louisa County Sheriff's Office executed a search warrant at Stone's residence. During the search, authorities seized a number of digital media storage devices, including a tablet which digital forensics determined stored 50 images that involved INFANTS being sexually assaulted. Louisa Commonwealth's attorney, Rusty McGuire, recommended taking out 50 warrants immediately. Upon learning that Stone was a member of the Richmond Police Department, his superiors were contacted. Stone was arrested by members of his own department on January 25th, according to authorities. Prior to his arrest, he had been with the Richmond Police Department since November 27th, 2006! Nobody is above the law, and this case sends a message to not exploit children in Louisa, McGuire said. It was sad to hear that the defendant was a member of law enforcement, and we know his behavior does not represent the thousands of men and women who do the right thing daily for our communities. However, when there is a bad apple, we will swiftly hold him accountable. Sure are a lot of bad apples, aren't there? Isn't it? But you know, obviously the, uh, the Against Groomers account would absolutely have some information on these people, right? Ah, oh, fuck. No, they don't. Shucks. Man, oh gee. Um, all right, well, let, uh, let's move on, you know? Okay, fine. Not that one either. We're at six in. Six out of ten. Um, and let's just go on WSB TV uh, news uh, and hear about the former Georgia school resource officer sentenced to 15 years for creating child porn. This guy didn't even... Just have it. He created it. <laughs> Lons County, Georgia, a former Georgia police and school resource officer has been sentenced to more than 15 years in prison for producing child sexual abuse materials. Jonathan Eric Hancock, 32, of Hahira, was sentenced to serve 190 months in prison, followed by 12 years of supervised release. He will also have to register as a sex offender. Quote, it is intolerable that an individual in a position of trust and with access to children would produce child sexual abuse material, said U.S. Attorney Peter D. Leary. Law enforcement and school authorities move quickly to ensure the protection of children and to help us hold the defendant accountable. According to the district attorney's office, Hancock worked as an officer for the Valdosta Police Department and served as an SRO for Lomax Elementary School. It, 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 isn't it great that Lomax sounds like a prison? Schools are prisons. Just, just a reminder that occasionally they'll just go mask off by naming... That occasionally they'll just go mask off by naming it something like Lomax. Yeah, not Supermax. At least it's not fucking Supermax. It's Lomax. Anyway... Parents and guardians of children who might have encountered Hancock and have concerns related to this investigation can contact the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office at 229-671-2950. But they clearly have something on that guy, right? 
Damn. You know, it's almost like like they don't give a shit unless it's a specific type of alleged grooming case. It's almost like they're serving an agenda. No, that couldn't be. All right, well then, let's let's move on to the next one. It's on ABC7 KRCR. Former Reading CHP officer pled guilty to child pornography charges. Noticing a theme here, a former CHP officer from Reading pled guilty to child pornography charges in federal court, U.S. Attorney Philip A. Talbert announced Tuesday. According to the Department of Justice, Timothy Allen Horwath, 53, formerly of Reading, pled guilty to receipt of child pornography. According to court documents, between February 25th, 2019 and October 10th, 2019, Horwath knowingly received visual depictions of children engaging in sexually explicit conduct. At the time of his offense, Horwath was employed as a patrol officer by the California Highway Patrol. Horwath's pretrial release was revoked on February 24, 2023, after he violated his bond conditions by accessing the internet and using smartphones and tablet computers that he was prohibited from possessing. As part of the plea agreement, Horwath has agreed to pay 75000 for restitution to victims, assessments, and other financial penalties. This case is the product of an investigation by the CHP's Computer Crime Investigation Unit and the FBI. Assistant U.S. Attorney Christina McCall is prosecuting the case. Horwath is scheduled to be sentenced on October 22nd. He faces a mandatory minimum sentence of five years in prison and a maximum statutory penalty of 20 years in prison and a fine of up to $250,000 in restitution to the victims of the offense. He was given pre-trial motherfucking release! They let him out! And then he violated that and did more! Did this account have shit to say about him? Uh, no, it doesn't look like they did. It doesn't look like they give a fucking shit about this case either. Man, we're eight groomers in. We're eight pedos in. And for some reason, this account doesn't seem to care. I wonder fucking why. Oh, let's move on to this next case where it says... Former NC trooper arrested for assaulting and trafficking a Charleston teen. Charleston, South Carolina. A former North Carolina state trooper accused of sexually assaulting and trafficking a teenage girl was arrested Monday in Charleston. David William Hollers was taken into custody by the Charleston Police Department with assistance of the Charleston County Sheriff's Office, Homeland Security Investigations, and the Attorney General's Office. According to law enforcement, the victim's parent reported the crimes in late March. The girl was between the ages of 14 and 15 when the crimes occurred. An investigation revealed that Hollers met the victim through Snapchat and engaged sexually explicit content with her. He also met the victim multiple times for sexual activity and provided money or gifts in exchange for sexual contact. CBD charged Hollers with one count of trafficking in persons, victim under 18, and three counts of criminal sexual assault with a minor second degree. Halders is facing six charges from CCSO, including trafficking in persons under 18, criminal solicitation of a minor, and two counts each of first-degree sexual exploitation of a minor and second-degree criminal sexual conduct with a minor. Halders is currently being held at the Al Cannon Detention Center. Sources told News 2 Halders is a former trooper with the North Carolina Highway Patrol. Darn! Yeah, it would be a shame if this account doesn't talk about that either. Nice. You know, I'm sure that this is just yet another anomaly. So let's say, you know, 9 out of 10, we still got a good record. 10 out of 10? 10 out of 10? Oh, right. This is Rochester's News Talk. Talking about a... Former New Ulm police investigator sentenced for child sex abuse. A former police investigator for a city in southern Minnesota has been sentenced to 90 days in jail for child sexual abuse. 
A judge in Brown County has given 43-year-old Eric Gramentz a state prison sentence, totaling more than 22 years, that he could be ordered to serve if he does not meet the terms of his probation. The judge set the length of his probation at 25 years. Gramentz entered guilty pleas in January to one count of first-degree criminal sexual conduct and two counts of sec second-degree criminal sexual conduct. He was accused of sexually assaulting a child who was 11 or 12 years old at the time! The sexual abuse occurred in 2017, but the charges were not brought against Gramitz until last April when the victim confided with another person about the abuse and that person confronted the veteran New Ulm police officer. They gave him 25 years of probation after staying his sentence! This guy gets to walk the motherfucking streets! Did the account give a shit? Fuck no, it didn't! So, while it's not giving a shit about these 10 out of 10 cases, let's go to this last case, which is a whole ass ball of wax saying from WTRF.com, West Virginia State Police Investigation, 10 more minors 42 more women in total to sue West Virginia State Police over hidden cameras. The article goes on to say more women are filing lawsuits against West Virginia State Police. Wheeling West Virginia attorney Teresa Torreseva sent a notice of legal action to interim WVSP Superintendent Colonel Jack Chambers and West Virginia Ger Attorney General Patrick Morrissey on April 21st saying 42 women, including 10 minors, plan to file lawsuits against the WVSP. The minors attended Junior Trooper Academy. According to a letter sent by Corporal Joseph Comer, a member of the WV State Police to state lawmakers, Governor Jim Justice in the office of the Attorney General on February 16th, a hidden camera or cameras were placed and operated inside the female locker room at the State Police Academy. Tony Seva says her clients and other female Junior Trooper program attendees accessed and used the female locker room at the Academy during the time the anonymous letter states the cameras were in use. Tori Seva also says the taping of the females in the academy did not end until 2020, the same time the junior trooper program was discontinued in 2020. Quote, our ongoing investigation shows rampant sexual misconduct, including hidden videotaping toward female cadets and others while they attended the academy. Torreseva told 7 News, Much of the conduct is through witness-provided evidence. Torreseva says these women th that were videotaped have experienced varying levels of physical and emotional abuse. Quote, All of these women were victims of a civil conspiracy perpetrated by instructors, staff, and leadership at the WVSP Academy, the letter states. Accordingly, these women will bring suit seeking all available damages under the law. On March 20th, West Virginia State Police Superintendent Jan Cahill resigned from his position and West Virginia Governor Jim Justice appointed Jack Chambers to the position. Justice says he expects that Chambers will address any issues and allegations against the WVSP, including allegations of a trooper who has since passed away installing a camera in a women's locker room at state police headquarters and recording video. Justice says other troopers who later found the USB flash drive with the video on it allegedly threw it on the floor and stomped on it, destroying the evidence. Okay, so you got 10 already and you got one more chance one more chance to prove that you... Oh, right. Oh, this doesn't fit your agenda. So you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. You're not going to cover anything related to this uh, police academy. Because covering that police will even sexually abuse their own women and groom their own girls, that would fuck with your right-wing agenda, wouldn't it? It's almost like none of this 
is actually for the kids. It's almost like it's all designed to enrich you and make sure you can keep selling shirts, make sure you can keep getting your billboards out there, harassing trans people, making sure you can continue to say all the bullshit you want about grooming as long as it doesn't have anything to do with any other alleged grooming than trans people and people talking about gender issues. Go fuck yourself! Until you're willing to look at all the evidence and go against all the groomers, do not tell me you're against them. Do not lie to me that you give a shit if you're going to ignore every bit of grooming that does not conform to your ideology. Because this is bullshit. It's been bullshit since the start. It's been bullshit since. Every step of the way. But... You know, this video, this video sure won't get spread. Most people won't give a shit. Most people on the right won't hold gays against groomers accountable because those people are part of their respectability politics mechanism. Like, yeah, we don't hate all sexual minorities as long as you're not one of those people. You're one of the good ones, gays against groomers. You're a useful idiot. So they will not go against you. They will not hold you accountable. They will not look you in the eye and tell you that you've got deficits in this field. They won't give a fucking shit because you're useful to them. And you won't give a shit either because you don't have to. You won't go over the vast majority of grooming to prove that it's not actually a trans issue. That it's not actually a liberal issue. That is not actually an issue of homosexuality or, or trans or anything like that. You will continue to pretend that this is this minor of an issue while ignoring all the minors who have an issue with anyone that falls outside of your narrow purview. Because you're a piece of fucking shit and you exploit children victims for your own bigoted fucking agenda. And that gives everybody in my actual ethical circles who actually gives a shit all the more reason to smash the fucking state. If society was, if, if, if society was different and that we stopped insisting that, that you're a kid until you're 25 and we, and we just deal with the reality that at about 16 you're an adult who is who is mature and can make decisions you are that at 16 i don't care what